So you have deployed your Wi-Fi access point. It can be a 40 access point, it can be a Ruckus access point, it can be just about any access point out there. Now, what do you do next? Do you really understand the importance of channel utilization? Do you understand what is an SNR? Well, if you do, skip this video. If not, stay with me. We will look at the different Wi-Fi networks around us using a free tool which is called Wi-Fi Explorer. It is available, as far as I know, only to the Mac platform, but you can use just about any other Wi-Fi scanning tool. The terms are the same terms used everywhere. Coming up. Let's look at the different columns and understand what do we have in the air around us. The first column, the network name, is actually the SSIDs of the networks. The SSIDs, the service set identifiers, actually the name of the network. So that is quite simple. The next column is the BSSID. BSSID is only the MAC address of that access point. So the MAC address is actually a 48-bit hexadecimal number that is comprised of the first 24-bit, which is the vendor name, and the other 24-bit. So the next column is quite obvious. That's the way uh, that our scanning tool knows which vendor is behind that access point. And we can see the names of the different vendors from Technicolor, Texas Instrument, Fortinet, and so on. We can also filter access point that comes from the specific vendor if we head to our filter pane and now let's look for access point let's look for a known vendor which is dealing and see that we actually have two different access points that comes from dealing all right so let's just close that the next column is the signal column now, signal strength is also known as RSSI, which is the Received Signal Strength Indicator. It is a measure to determine how strong or how low is the signal that you can hear. Now, you will usually see signal strength in dBm, that is decibels in reference to one milliwatt. We will look at that term more closely as it is quite important. Remember that you will always, almost always, see RSSI or signal strength in terms of minus something. Now, even if your access point transmits in a positive dB value, the signal at attenuates immediately and you will get minus something dBm. Now the lower the better. The lower means that you're either closer to the access point or that the access point transmits, transmits in a higher power. The next two columns are of great importance. The noise column actually determines the amount of noise in the air. Noise can come from similar devices that transmit in the same frequency. It could be either access point, wireless routers, and it can also be wireless cameras, wireless IP phones, and so on. Anything that transmits signals in the air. Now let's look at the noise number, which is minus 66 dBm. It is also measured in dBm. And there we have the signal to noise ratio, which is 31 dB or 25 dB. Now remember this. The SNR is actually the difference between the signal 
and the noise around it, the noise in the air. That is minus 96 versus minus 71. A good practice is to have a minimum SNR of 25 dB. If it is lower than 25, then you have an issue. You have an issue that will impact your network performance. So be sure that the SNR is not lower than 25. It should be higher. It should be 30 dB or 35 dB. But 25 dB is quite good. If you have networks with SNR of 11 dB, then you have an issue and you should look at your Wi-Fi deployment and the other appliances that transmits in your area. We will skip the channel column and the channel width column and move to channel utilization. Channel utilization is one of those things that influence your Wi-Fi performance. What makes a channel utilized besides data? Well, too many beacon frames in a second. Too many SSIDs that are being sent from the access point. So be aware of channel utilization and don't let your channel, your Wi-Fi channel, work too hard. If you have an issue, just add up another access point and split the traffic.